Hi folks, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make this digital clock in Blender. So, let's hop right into it. This is going to be a beginner's tutorial, so I'm going to enable my screencast keys out of it. It's right here. Um, this is my first tutorial on this channel, so don't be too harsh. Um, so, down here you can see everything I do. I can press my mouse wheel, I can left click, right click. Uh, whatever. So first thing I'm gonna do is delete uh, this lamp and this cube will stay. So I'm first going to change in the scene tab the units. I'm gonna change it from uh, meters to centimeters. Next up I'm going to press M and go into the item properties and I'm gonna change this down to let's say 15 centimeters by, by let's say 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters hmm. yeah let's just say 20 but 20 looks better um, now that we have that let's change our view uh, the clip stars because if we zoom in enough you can see this whole ad uh, this whole edge gets removed uh, that's because it starts clipping and uh, now we can go as, as far as near as we want and it won't happen. So now what you're gonna do is click uh, Ctrl and A and then apply the rotation and the scale because if we don't do that we're going to have trouble when we start modeling. Um, now we're going to press Tab to enter edit, edit mode. Uh, select the edge selection tool, click uh, with your right, right mouse button or whatever you've selected at the start of the program. Uh, might be left click, it might be right click, you have to see for yourself. Uh, then we're going to press Ctrl B for bevel. We're going to make uh, we're going to make a bevel that is about this size, and we can and we can scroll with our mouse wheel. I will give it... Um, yeah, let's try again. Uh, I will give it... let's see... Yeah, 8 segments is enough. Now we have um, this around the cube. Um, now if we go into our modifiers, that's the wrench here, and go into bevel we can see that it gets beveled on uh, everywhere basically but we don't want that, we only want it at the sharp angles because we've already beveled this so now we have something different but we don't want that well as well we want a fairly small bevel about 0.5 centimeters or even that is too much let's try 0.25 that's good I'm going to give it three segments and press W and shade it smooth. Now if I go into front view with number one, I can tab into edit mode again, take the face selection mode over here, press the front face, press I for inset, then move it down until I like it, and then press E for extrude and extrude it inwards. Now we have this shape. And all the edges get beveled as well, because we have that modifier, we didn't do it by hand. So it automatically does it everywhere. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to make um, some feet the box can stand on, or the clock. We're going to press Ctrl A, add a cube, and now we can see it when we go into uh, the wire view per chain. We can see that it's all the way over here. We don't want that, so we'll delete it with X. Uh, what we can do now to get the origin point back at the center is to press Shift S and then cursor to world origin. And we play, uh, then we press Shift A and we add a cube. The cube is obviously way too big. We scale it down until we get something like something like this. We enter edit mode and then move it, so the origin point stays in the middle. You can 
move it right here, scale it, move it up. Um, we want the origin point to stay right there so we can mirror it. But we press number pad 3 to enter side, uh, the side view. I press S and then Y to scale on the Y axis. Pardon. Um, quickly turn that off. So then we can exit that edit mode. And when we then press mirror at the, at the modifiers, um, it's right here. We can see now we have two cubes. And then when we press, uh, when we go to bevel, you can see it bevels just like this. Um, and we can press rotation scale, that messes up everything up, but that's fine, we can just reduce it. We have to apply the rotation and scale because if we don't do that, uh, basically what's going to happen, it's going to bevel everything unevenly um, based on. Um, Basically, based on how, based on these numbers, if I scale in the y, it's going to uh, it's going to scale the y axis less until we press rotation and scale and resets it to one. Uh, but I don't want that, so this is fine. Uh, now we can increase the bevel to like 0.5 centimeters uh, or point. Let's try again, point three five. That seems okay. I'm just going to move it up a bit, and then press W and shade smooth. Now we have that. Uh, now I just want a button to press over here. So I'm going to add a cube again, scale it down, and then I'll move it up with G, and then I'll press 7 to enter the top orthographic mode. I'll press uh, S and Y to scale along the Y axis, then S and X to scale along the Z -ax uh, the X axis. Um, that should be fine. Now we see we've distorted everything again. So if we bevel it, it's going to be uneven again. So like this. You can see this edge gets beveled much more than this. So we press Ctrl A, rotation and scale, and it gets messed up again only because the scale is way too high up. This basically multiplies this value, so if it, is, if it is below 1, it's going to multiply this and it's going to be much smaller, but when it sets to 1, then it's going to be that value over here. So we can press point 0.25, that seems about right, Just let's do a bit more, 0.35. That's better. Oops. I'll give it three segments again and move it down. That seems about right. And now we have our clock. Um, basically, what's missing is uh, basically what's missing is the numbers. So we can press press Shift S, cursor to world origin, Shift A, Q. Now we scale it down again, like this, we move it forward, and now what we can do is we rotate it along the y-axis by 45 degrees, now we get this dot kind of thing, I'll scale it down even more and bring it forward even more. And then I'll scale it down even more, just like this. Um, yeah, we can tweak it later, I guess. But I'll press S and then Shift Y, so I can scale it along every axis but Y. And now that should be all right. I enter Edit Mode, so we don't move the origin again. Press G. Then X, uh, and then Z to move it along the Z axis. I'll place it right over here and then I'll mirror it again. Let's find it. Mirror. There we go, but since we've rotated the cube a bit, 
it's going to rotate over here, and we don't want that, so we press Control A, rotation scale, since both the scale and the rotations are messed up. Now it's gone, but that's only because we have to mirror it along the Z axis, because it's going down. So we have that. Hmm. Now what we can do is we're going to press Shift A, we're going to insert a plane, I'm going to scale it down quite a bunch, then I'll press R, X and 90, so we rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis, I'll bring it down quite a bunch, and I'll bring it here. I'm not taking into account the origin point this time, because I'll do that later. So now what I can do is I can scale it along the x-axis, and I wonder what's wrong here. Pivot point is set to 3D cursor. I'll set it to individual origins. Now I can scale it down quite a bunch. Press Control R in edit mode to add a loop cut. It's basically a cut down the middle of it. So I'll do that on the Z axis. Now I can move the cut, but I don't want that, so I'm going to press right click to reset it to the middle. Now I can scale that loop cut on the Z axis to get this sort of shape. I'll scale it down quite a bunch. Now I can press G and Z to move it up. Then I can duplicate it. G, Z, move it down. Now this doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry. Now press Shift D to duplicate. R, uh, R, Y, 90. So I can move it like this. Now I can grab it with G and make an eighth, G, Z, move it down, and again, G, Z, move it down. Now I can get, I'll grab both this and this, shift, right click, now I'll press shift D, and then move it right here, on the X axis. Now we have an eight. Why do we need an eight? Because, as you've seen on every digital clock, basically, the number eight can display every other uh, every other number. So we're going to set this to medium point, and we can scale everything down equally. I'll do it like this. I'll press Control and J to join everything. Now it's all one piece. If I select this and then this again, it's all one piece. I can move this on the X, then I'll duplicate it again, move it on the X, and this seems about right. I'll select both of them, then press Ctrl J to join them again. Then I'll add a mirror modifier again. Now it mirrors it on the wrong axis, and as the mirror object, since this is already mirrored based on the center of the frame, or the center of this clock, I can select the mirror object and I can press this eyedropper tool, set this to, the, uh, to this cube, and now we basically have this. If I go into edit mode, select everything with A, press G, X, I can move both sides, as, as both sides at once and set it to the distance I like. In this case, I like this. Now what I can do is press, well first of all let's get into this shading mode and try to align this as best as we can. We don't have to do a pixel perfect job but this is fine. Just align this with that, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll tap into edit mode again, press E, just move it in, doesn't matter how much. Just enough that it intersects with that. So, what we can do now, we won't shape this smooth since it's going to it's going to look weird and also I like this hard hard edge. Um, 
So what we are, what we're going to do now is give this some proper shading. What uh, we will do for that is we'll get into the shading workspace right over here. Um, I'm going to move a bit closer again. Number pad one, and then just scroll. You can press Shift and middle click to move along one plane and not rotate it. So that's pretty handy. I'll grab um, my my box or the body of the clock. I'll give it another color, like a dark gray, like point one. This is pretty dark now, but it's not quite black. Then I'm going to give the same material, just call it clock. I go to I will go to the legs. Get this. Uh, press this button. Press on clock. And now it has the same material. Now I can press this, but I want it to have the same material. I want it to be red. So I'm going to press the base color again. And basically, basically I'm going to give this a nice red color. Just like this. That seems fine. And now we have that. I would like to make this a shiny clock, so I'm going to set the roughness to 0.25 and this also 0.25. You could make this technically a metal uh, metal clock. I'll run you one of these two. But at this point I just want a plastic uh, plastic watch. So this will do. Then I'll grab these. Uh, the the numbers, and I'll give this a new material, but I'll uh, I'll delete the principal BSDF. I'll call this letter letter on, not letter on, uh, num number on. Uh, delete the principal BSDF. Then we get with well, Shift A, you can press uh, Shift A, search, and we search for emission. We put the emission into the surface, and now we have uh, emissive letters. I want this to be a bright red, so I'll get red all the way up, green and blue all the way down. Give this a strength, so a strength of uh, like three. Seems fine. And what we can do now is give this some some shading, so we can get a, a Voronoi texture. Um, we could set this inside here. Uh, set it from uh, closest, no, from distance to Chubby Chub, and bring the scale up, so we can see something happening here. Now we can... oops, I didn't want that. Now we can add a noise texture, put it into the vector, or maybe the other way around. Yeah, that's more like it. Now we get this spirally pattern. Uh, if we increase the noise, we're going to increase the, the number of spirals. We increase the Voronoi texture, we're going to increase the amount of uh, boxes inside here. I'm just going to set this to 6 and this like like 15 and that looks good. But now we have the problem that we don't really have a red color anymore so we're going to unplug this, get the color ramp and we're going to drop, drop uh, this color output into the factor and the color into the color of this uh, ambition shader. Like that. Now it's black and white again, but now what we can do is we're going to grab the right handle, like the white, uh, go to RGB, grab the green, bring it down, grab the blue, bring it down, and now we have red again. But we have also this pattern, which I really like, and now what we could do is we can bring this up a bit, and that seems about uh, that seems about right. Ok, 
can give this also the we can give the dots also the same material but now everything is glowing and it's not and it's never 88 88 so what we can do is set this to a time we actually know I'm going to set it to I don't know let's see I'm going to set this to um, it to 135. So now we can select everything we want. I want 1, 30, 5. And now, basically, since the numbers are already on, we can press Ctrl and I. And now we have selected everything we don't want to glow. We go into the shading tab. Uh, we press the plus icon, then we select new and assign. What that did was, if I go back into shaded mode, mode, we can see everything is glowing that we wanted, but everything that we don't want to glow doesn't. So we can go here, press A, then Control C, then go into the other material, delete everything and press Control V. Now everything is glowing again, which we don't want. We're going to set this inside here. Oops. We're going to set the color ramp inside there in the material output. Then we press Shift A, search. Um, let's search for glass. And bring up the roughness to a point four. So now if we show this in rendered mode, in cycles, we can see these numbers glow, the other one don't. The other ones don't. So now what we can do is simply uh, make a plane, which we can put our clock on. Um, but first of all, I want to make the glowing effect a bit, uh, a bit more prominent. So I'm going to give this a strength of 10. Now it gives out more light. Now what we can do is press Shift A, plane. Again, if your cursor is away, then just press Shift S and cursor to world origin. Um, now. Front, uh, we're going to now we can go into front orthographic mode, our view, press G, Z, bring it down until it's right underneath the feet of our clock. That should be all done. Now, what we can do is scale this down, uh, press E in edit mode to extrude it down. Um, I don't want this face down here because I don't need it. We won't see it anyways. Um, so now I can give this all a nice bevel. I'll press Ctrl A, rotation and scale. Um, and I'll give this bevel here. Make it way smaller. Give this a few more segments. Shade smooth. And now I want this to be black completely make it 0.3 in roughness so it's a bit less glossy than this but also glossy and now the lighting since we can see that there is not much lighting going on in this scene um, we have to add an HDRI which you can get from HDRI which you can get from HDRI Haven which you can get from HDRIHaven.com um, how do we import it? We get into the World tab, press on the little dot next to the color, then we go to Environment Texture, press Open, go to the folder to which we have downloaded our HDRI. I have this Fireplace 4K. Now if you go into uh, the shaded mode in our viewport settings, you can see that we have basically 
light cast from this image in the background onto our scene and also uh, we get these nice reflections. So now I will go to my camera pressing number pad zero um, and I'll just go more in the direction of my clock so it fills up more of the frame. I think yeah, I think this is good. Um, we have this blurry we have this blurry reflection. We have this blurry reflection here, which I quite like. Um, we have our light cast from this clock. And now what we have to do is just basically uh, give this some depth of field. So we press anywhere uh, where we want the uh, picture to be in focus, so I want it on the 3. I'll go to Shift A and I'll add the plane axis. I'll scale it down a bit. You don't have to do it, but I like to do it. Um, now what I'll do, I'll, I'll grab the camera, I'll right click, I'll select the camera, I'll go to the camera uh, tab, press depth of field, now we can see that everything is out of focus. The focus object should be the empty. Now we can see that our clock is in focus and everything else isn't. But how much of the clock is actually in focus? If we, uh, if we press control, control B and just select this, we can see it renders a bit faster so we can see better. Uh, this part here isn't in focus yet. And I don't want that, so I'll press 3.5. The, low, uh, the lower you go, the more the depth of field you get. The higher you go, the, the less blurriness you'll get. So I like this better. It's still a bit out of focus, but not as much. I'll maybe go up to uh, F4. And that seems to be nice. And now I'll just give this a quick run. And now I'll just give this a quick render. And when it's done, I'll be back. So now I'm back. I have this as my render result. It looks quite good. I rendered it with 500 samples. How you'll change that, I'll show you in a bit. So we have everything. We have the reflective plane. We have uh, the depth of field. So the background is a bit blurry. We have that uh, emissive, emissive uh, numbers. We have the numbers which are off, uh, 135, and. Basically, that's all we need. So, we have lighting, we have shading. How did I render this? I rendered this in the Cycles render engine. Um, that is important that you set it to Cycles. Uh, otherwise, it will look a bit different. Um, I, sent the, I set the render count to 500. And now, if we go to the compositing workspace, uh, we can use, use nodes. Um, to simply give it a glare effect, like a bit of bloom here around the emissive colors. So now if we go to compositing, click Shift A and glare, and then we set it to uh, to fog glow. And if we uh, and if we look at it now in the shading uh, in the rendering workspace, we can see it's a bit glary. So we can set the size up and set this to high and we see it's compositing, we have that little glare effect. Now the tutorial is over and I hope you learned something. We will see each other in the next episode when we make a flag, an animated flag in Blender. So make sure to come again tomorrow and learn something about that. So yeah, see ya.